85 miles per hour. Nice lift. That was a rip. Welcome to D-League BP. I'm Michael, and for you guys who don't know, about two years ago, I set out to fix what was an ugly, terrible slow pitch softball swing. Here, you can see it for yourself. Now, with a lot of hard work, some research, and just sweat, I was able to improve that swing that you just saw into something that looks a little bit better today. And here it is. 85 miles per hour. Ready? 90 miles per Woo! hour. Now, even with that improvement, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I'm some kind of expert when it comes to hitting a slow pitch softball or that I have the perfect swing because neither one of those things are true. But over the past two years, I picked up a good deal of information that I'd like to share with you guys so that maybe I can help you with your journey. So with that said, I just want to say that these series of videos that I'm going to put together, they're not for upper level advanced hitters. If you're already hitting home runs on the regular, hitting the ball 300 feet, hitting the ball over 90 miles per hour, I don't have a lot I think that I can offer you. But if you're somebody who perhaps has just decided for the first time to ever play a bat and ball sport, you've never played little league or high school baseball or anything like that, and you just decide you want to join a, a slow pitch softball league, then maybe I can help you out. Or if you were like me and after many years, you know, your swing kind of fell apart, your athleticism kind of fell apart, and you just realized that you sucked and you weren't very good anymore and you wanted to be better and you want to make over and build, rebuild your swing from the ground up. I can help you, but for everybody else, you know, watch if you want, add comments below if you'd like, just keep them, you know, respectful. And remember the rest of us are trying to learn. And the only person I'm trying to be better than is myself yesterday. So with that said, let's get to these videos. So in the first installment of this series, I'm going to focus on two things. The first two things that I actually looked at whenever I started my own journey to improve my slow pitch softball swing. That's my stance and my grip. Now, these aren't very big changes that you'll be making, but they're important nonetheless. So with that said, let's get to the field so I can better explain what I'm talking about. So let's start with stance. The very first thing I did when I started working on my swing was I actually changed my stance. And at the time I made my very first video, I thought it was so insignificant that I didn't even really talk about it at all. But now that I'm revisiting this a couple years later and going through the steps I took, to change my swing and make a better solo pitch softball swing, I want to start where I started originally, and that was with my stance. And this is actually pretty simple. It's, it's really basic. My recommendation to you is to relax. When you're in the batter's box, when you get up here and you're waiting for a pitch, simply stand up. Stand up and relax. You don't need your feet any more than shoulder lengths apart and you just want to sit here and be ready for the ball to come. You have more than enough time to react to the pitch whenever it's thrown from out there. you got seconds, in fact. This isn't baseball anymore, guys. If you started off and you started off playing Little League Baseball, you know, and that was the last time you played, or high school baseball, or something like that, it's not baseball. We don't need to be more down into, you know, a traditional hitter's stance because the ball for a strike is not going to be between our knees and our belt. We don't need to get down to the ball and it's not coming in at 70, 80, 90 miles per hour so we don't need to react to it quickly. We have plenty of time to load up and take our swing. So you don't need to be down here guys. You don't need to be in this stance taking that swing. You, that's not what's needed. The, the bat and the ball get used to taking batting practice where you're hitting balls up above your waist between between your armpits and your waist. Get used to hitting balls up here and to do that we need to stand up. So relax a little bit, start your stance in an upright position. All right now inevitably once I told you to stand up and relax I know that some of you are going to have some questions about should I start with a neutral stance? Should I start with an open stance? Should I start with a closed stance? And all of that. In the grand scheme of things, if we're looking at this 
and every slow pitch softball hitter from 30,000 feet, it does not matter. It doesn't matter if you start with a wide open stance or you start by showing the pitcher your back or if you're in a neutral position. It's not going to matter because all that matters, the most important part of your slow pitch softball swing is not going to start until your front foot, and your front foot lands on the ground and you're in that connected position and you're going to make your swing. So until then, nothing you're doing is truly significant. Now you might screw up your swing with some of the things you're doing by not getting to the connected position, but so long as you get to that position, it doesn't matter if you're open, you're closed, or you're neutral. Now, if you're just trying to learn how to hit a slow pitch softball, if you're just starting out, maybe you've never played before, or you're really trying to make over your swing, I recommend starting in the neutral position. It's less things that you can mess up from here. All you're trying to do now is load up a little on your back foot, go forward, and take your swing. That's it. There's not a lot to mess up. And as you get better, as you improve, then you can start experimenting with things like an open stance. Perhaps you're getting older and you don't see the ball as well as you do, you know, you used to. Having an open stance allows you, if you're right-handed, you know, if you're right-eye dominant and you're batting right-handed, to put your right eye and see the ball and get a better depth perception. And especially when you're playing night games in a rec league, that can be kind of important to see the ball, guys. We're getting old. So being able to see it and having an open stance can be advantageous. If you're, if you're a guy out there, you know, and you're very, uh, you're very apt to kind of throw your shoulder open too early. Sometimes starting with a closed stance can help you stay nice and tight throughout your swing. So as you get better, as you improve, you can start to actually play with things like an open stance or a closed stance. But for the time being, as you're trying to get better, as you're trying to learn how to hit a slow pitch softball correctly, keep it simple. Start in a neutral stance, start with your feet basically shoulder length apart, and just relax. Now one more thing that, you, that people might ask is about where do I put my hands? Where do I put my hands? Now I'm gonna talk about this in more in part two about your swing path, but that also doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you hold them down here while you wait, or if you just rest the bat on your shoulder while you wait. So long as you get them to that connected position, just like everything else, it doesn't matter. So find you a nice, comfortable, neutral position in the batter's box whenever you get up there and just wait for that pitch to come in. And at that point, you have all the time in the world to load up and take your cut. So the two big things with the grip, in order to improve it, the things that I did was first and foremost, whenever you're holding the bat, you want your knockers on your hands. The, the part you would use to knock on the door, you'd want those knuckles to line up, much like this. So you want those knuckles lined up. And what that is going to allow you to do is when you take a swing, you're going to take a nice level swing and it's something I'm going to discuss in detail in part two. But when you do that, you're going to want your two hands to finish with that back arm, that back hand palm up and your top hand palm down. It's, it's, it's as if you're swinging an ax is the, the analogy that a lot of guys out there will use is you're swinging an ax. Um, I think about it as you're swinging a sword and you're, you're playing Fruit Ninja with the ball. You're just trying to cut it in half. That's, the, that's the, the advice that I give the guys on the team is whenever you're hitting, you just want to take a nice easy step, turn your hips, and try to cut the ball in half. And it's really hard to cut the ball in half with that traditional grip because what happens is that backhand wants to pull over. If you see the bat head, it, it comes up and you're going to roll over a lot of balls. That is the issue with that more traditional grip, is when you come over, you're going to come over and the bat head is going to come up. And so a lot of you guys out there, if you've been hitting lots of weak ground balls, you're always, you're always saying, hey, I'm rolling over and you know, I'm hitting the ball and I'm hitting really weak ground balls a lot. Perhaps your issue lies not in your actual swing, but perhaps in your grip. And changing something as simple as how you're holding the bat might help you with that. 
So what I did and where I've gotten to and where I recommend everybody try to start at is gripping the bat properly. Now for that, what you're going to do is you're going to lay the bat not in the palm of your hand. You don't want to lay it in the palm of your hand. Camera as well. You want to hold the bat here, not here, but here in your fingers. All right. And you do the same thing with your top hand. So turning that around, you do the same thing with your top hand. So that's where you want to hold that bat. You're not putting it in the palm of your hand. You're holding it out here, kind of in the fingers of your hand. And you want to make sure that your knuckles are all lined up there for you. Um, and that's going to make it very simple when we talk about later in part two about bath pat of taking that nice easy cut and it will just kind of snap over for you. It makes a nice easy swing and you're ending, as I said, with the palm up, palm down motion. That will let you take nice easy swings. You don't have to swing out of your shoes. Just so long as you're rotating your hips a little, taking the proper bat path, which again, not talk about it all over, but I'll talk about that in part two. But the hands, just a nice, easy swing with the hands so that they're finishing with that palm up, palm down position. So it's a fairly simple, fairly easy swing. All right, and just like I did when I talked about stance, I'm gonna try to get ahead of a couple of your questions because I can already hear some of you typing away. Should I use an overlap grip? Should I drop a pinky? Should I do all of that? Again, from 30,000 feet, looking down at every softball player, in the grand scheme of things, I don't think it matters. I don't think it matters if you want to use a very traditional grip where you hold as much of the bat as possible, you know, keeping your pinky up above the knob and holding up as much. What this is going to do is give you as much control over this bat head as you can possibly have on this particular grip. This is also for beginners where I recommend that you start. Start with as much bat head control as you can get. Start with this. Now going back all the way to high school, I've always dropped a pinky and that just means that I dangle a pinky off the bottom of the grip right here. So that's what I do there. Dropping a pinky lets me get just a little bit farther down the bat and it changes the leverage point. It changes where the bat whip is. The longer you make your bat, the more power and speed you're going to generate with it. That's why a lot of guys really like an overlap grip. And now by an overlap grip, I'm just saying that instead of having this top hand in a traditional way with the finger, they're going to come down and they're going to put that top hand over top of, they're going to cover up that bottom hand. And now you can modify that. You can go two fingers, you can go three fingers, just kind of dangle the pinky, just dangle a pinky there. You can dangle a couple fingers, you can go full overlap and just kind of hold the, your top hand is basically holding that bottom hand. Um, and again, I recommend you get comfortable hitting the ball and taking a good consistent swing so when you're hitting the ball regularly for base hits you're starting to generate more power you're feeling a lot more comfortable at that point when you're like hey i you know i could use an extra 10 15 feet i could use a couple of five ten miles per hour on the exit velos i'm looking for more power that's when i would recommend start playing with your grip a little bit drop the pinky finger perhaps play with a modified overlap grip Perhaps try a full overlap grip. Do it in the do it in the off season between between your rec leagues in the summer and the winter, and and spend a good month or two trying to get used to it because you're going to lose some back control. You're going to lose control of that bat head when you go to a full overlap grip. But you're going to get the payoff and the fact that you're going to get a whole lot more bat speed and a whole lot more whip. So those are the big two tips for this first part of the video. Your stance, stand up, and relax and your grip. Line up those knockers and get the bat more down in your fingers instead of the palm of your hands. Make sure you can finish with that bottom hand facing up, that top hand fishing facing down, just like if you were swinging an axe into a tree. You just want to be able to repeatedly have that bat head whip through there. 
Also, and I don't think I mentioned this a little bit earlier, you don't need a death grip on your bat. There's a reason they're using pine tar and sprays and everything in the major leagues. And that's, well, I mean, a lot of times because wood bats are slick, but also they're not putting a death grip on them, man. They're, they're holding them as tight as they need to hold them to make sure that they don't throw them out into the outfield. That's kind of it. I'm gonna run that out, by the way. So, nice, easy, relax. That's the whole point of this first video, relax. Relax while you're in the batter's box. Relax while you're gripping the bat. Put the right grip on it. Get ready for part two coming up where I'm gonna talk about your actual swing plane and getting into that connected position so that you can actually start the motion of the swing. So until that next video, man, I really appreciate you. I'll catch you guys on the other side. Peace. Now I wanna take one more second of your time just to thank you for watching one of my videos. I very much appreciate it. I really do, and I hope you enjoyed the content. If you did, do me a huge favor, hit that like button. It looks like this. You'll find it down there somewhere. And if you want to support the channel, if you want to help me get more content out to you, the best thing you can do is subscribe. It's free. It's simple. You just hit a button. I'll put it over down here. Let's put it down here, right down here. No pressure to hit it. Maybe just a little pressure. Subscribe. Anyway, I think that's enough said. Till the next video, I want y'all to keep doing your thing. Peace.